Assalamu alaikum everybody from the pearl of Uzbekistan, Samarkand. This city is beyond incredible. This city was once the capital of a great empire called the Timurid Empire. Uh, the founder, his name was Amir Temur and his mausoleum is here in the city, he is buried. And he is known as the last great emperor of the Central Asian steppe. This city, under his guidance and then from his descendants, especially his grandsons and his great-grandsons, became a city of learning, a city of architecture, a city of science and mathematics, a city of trade, a renewed vision of the Silk Road. And today I want to explain to you why Samarkand is such an important city in the world and why it's a place you have to go on your adventures around the world. Let's do it. In the late 1300s, a man named Amu Timur, or Temur, or Tamerlane as we call him in the United States, amassed an empire that was probably the most consequential of the time period in maybe all of Asia, and most certainly in the region. During his reign, he amassed a large centralized state. He took lands all the way until Ankara, until Egypt, until New Delhi, and the rest of Central Asia. And under this empire he created, he fostered a, what they would call an enlightenment, a renaissance for the Central Asian people of the time. As Samarkand as his capital, he called on all of the residents of this Timurid Empire to come to Samarkand to offer their artistic value, their artisanship, their religious value, their studious children, their military practices. And this became the center of a new, rejuvenated, and modernized Silk Road. As people started migrating here through the Central Asian region and resettling under the Timurid Empire and the rule of Amir Temur, a lot of cultural value was established here. And this really became, you know, like a Florence or a Venice, a Renaissance capital with a lot of cultural, historic, and artistic value. This area pumped out some of Persia's greatest poets, some amazing artisans, some architecture that is honestly mind-blowing, and history, science, and mathematics that still are with us today that are very important for our modern society. Although it was traded on the Silk Road and conquest that made this empire rich, it's really the cultural value and scientific value of the city that continues to keep the city alive and relevant today. The modern Uzbek city today here in Samarkand is filled with just dozens, if not hundreds, of massive mausoleums, mosques, and memorials that were built by the Timurids and the, the following empires. This is the most incredible city I think I've maybe ever been to. It rivals any great city in Europe, any great city in Asia that I've been to, and it's just astounding. And the scale, the detail, the geometric designs and patterns, the tile work, the amount of work that went into these places, it's, it's a testament to human achievement. And it's stunning, and it's miraculous, and Uzbekistan, pretty amazing. Our next stop on this journey through Samarkand takes us to Mirzo Ulubeg's observatory. So the story goes that Mirzo Ulubeg was the grandson of Amir Temur, who we just met earlier. He, while being a royal, while being a important military leader and being one of the important members of the Timur Empire, he was most intrigued and most inspired by science. Up upon this hill, above the city of Samarkand, the city of poets, of architecture, of literature, sat a great observatory. Ulubeg, this guy, was an extremely consequential and influential astronomer and scientist. And from this hill, he was able to capture 
a lot of information about the stars, about how space worked, about various astronomical figures and beings and positions. And a lot of this information, because this was on the Silk Road and because it was a flourishing time for this empire, was sent east to China, to Korea, to west, to uh, Europe, which was pre-Renaissance at this point. A lot of this work that was done in the early 1400s by Ulubeg and then of course by his followers and his students after his death really laid the foundation for modern astronomy and became a very important part of uh, the Europeans' goal to understand the stars and to understand the universe that we were living in. This guy is so important for astronomy that in fact he is noted as one of the five most important foundational astronomers and the schools that he set up basically spread and promulgated the idea of astronomy through the entire Western world, which is incredible. He even has a planet named for him, and many Uzbek scientists have stars, planets, craters on the moon named after them as well. This really hammers home the fact that the Silk Road was not simply important just for trading spices and silk from east to west but important for the spread of education, for the spread of science, for the spread of cultural advancement and religious studies. And it all happened here. This was the center of all of it. The Rome of the East, as they called Samarkand back in the day. Everything happened here and it's such a beautiful, beautiful place to be. On a very real note, I travel a lot, I go all over the world, and I've been to some amazing cities. But this city and Bukhara and Hiva, the three cities of ancient Uzbekistan, have absolutely blown my fucking mind. I always knew this would be a beautiful country, but this is way more than I expected. And the scale, the regalness of it, the absolute glory and grace and just it's just architectural paradise if you're an architecture fan it's it's unreal i normally don't break down in the middle of a video but i'm just i mean what can you really say you just need a montage of beautiful things here you go It's been a long and hot day in Samarkand, but I wanted to wait a few hours to take you to the pièce de résistance of maybe all of Uzbekistan. This is called Registan. Please look. The word Registan in Old Persian means desert or sandy place, and this was the center of the imperial Samarkand court. This was the location where people would attend public addresses by the uh, by the Khanate or the Emperor of the time as well as right in the middle of here public executions also a big thing during the time so what are these buildings these are called madrasas uh, madrasa is an Arabic or Farsi word for school so there's three different schools here one of them I believe this one was built by Ulubeg. It was his madras, which is kind of his university, and he would sometimes lecture and oversee different types of learning happening inside. 
typically at a madras, which was a higher education place. People would spend eight years studying uh, Islamic theory, uh, architecture, different sorts of uh, mathematics, or what have you. You could learn lots of different things. They also had schools for girls, although I'm not sure if, the, if this was actually one for girls. So originally back in the days of Amir Timur and Ulubeg, there was only one madrasa. And then the other two madrasas you can see here were built in the 17th century, in the mid 1600s. And so this one's super special because on the top here, there's uh, lion motifs with the face and the sun. Uh, it's really like in the epitome of what Persian architecture was at the time period and the amount of resources and the beauty that they were able to create is just just so phenomenal and one of these schools was actually a live-in school where people would travel from all over the uh, timurid empire to study here to be a part of the imperial court of students this last one and the big one with the extra dome is both a madrasa and also a mosque in the back Islamic learning and learning in general were kind of an overlap so there was kind of always this understanding that you'd study religious law and religious code and also mathematics and also astronomy and also all of these other subjects so a lot of these places were both home to religion and uh, to university liberal education. And I'll wrap this up here by saying this is one of the most majestic places I've ever been in my life. Samarkand the whole city is a UNESCO heritage site that you need to visit and I have no idea why this the Registan is not on the list of wonders of the world. Maybe it's because people don't know about it, maybe it's because it doesn't get as much tourists as others, maybe it's because it's a little bit newer and a little bit less historic than maybe like the pyramids or the Hagia Sophia or Chichen Itza, but this whole city is just a testament to how beautiful architecture can be, how great man was at creating beautiful things and how when empires had money, they could really build really nice things. It's just, it's just phenomenal. So for the first time on my travels, I leave you guys speechless. I have nothing more to say. If you're interested in some Archond, there's some great history to look up. I hope you guys learned something new today, and I hope you have the chance to come to this really, truly amazing city. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. We've got some stuff coming from Tashkent, so stay tuned for that. We got our what's going on in Uzbekistan video coming up. I know you guys like those. And uh, we got some more, uh, some more travels, always more travels here on Tales from the Road. See you next time from the capital.